You've worked hard in AP Chemistry all school year. Now it's time to prove what you know on the AP exam. There's just one problem. If you don't know the format and the rules for the exam ahead of time, you won't score up to your potential. Hi there, my name is Jeremy Krug. I've taught AP Chemistry for the past 25 years, and here's everything you need to know about the AP Chem exam. Let's start with some of the things you need to do before the day of your AP exam. As you probably know, this year's AP Chemistry exam will be administered through the Blue Book app provided by College Board. Well before you take the exam, you'll need to make sure the Blue Book app is downloaded onto your testing device. You can use a personal laptop, desktop computer in a computer lab, or a school-issued device like a Chromebook. You can use a tablet like an iPad, but you cannot use a mobile phone. Now don't wait until the night before the exam to download Blue Book. Do this well before the exam. If you're taking the exam on a school-managed device like a Chromebook, you might not be able to do this yourself. And just a heads up, the Blue Book app is pretty big. It takes up about one gigabyte of space on your hard drive. So on smaller capacity devices like Chromebooks, you might have to delete some things to make room for Blue Book. And speaking of devices, make sure your device is fully charged before you walk into the exam room. You'll need enough power to last about three and a half hours through the exam. And bring your charger just in case. You'll need to have a strong Wi-Fi signal with internet access during the entire exam. So make sure your device is connected to the internet well before starting the exam. You can bring an external mouse for your device if you'd like as well. If you're using an iPad, you'll need to bring an external keyboard for the exam. The on-screen keyboard will not work. Now, let's talk about the rules for taking the AP Chemistry exam. Make sure you know when and where you'll take your exam and get there early. If you arrive late, there's a good chance you won't be allowed in. When you arrive, you'll be assigned a seat. You aren't allowed to choose your own. You need to bring two sharpened number two pencils and you can bring two pens. You should bring your scientific calculator with a full charge or fresh batteries. You can also bring a second calculator as a backup. You should wear a digital watch so you can keep track of time as you take the exam. You should also bring a photo ID, especially if you're testing at a location that's not your own school where the test administrators might not know you personally. There are several items you should not bring to the exam. Do not bring your cell phone, smartwatch, or any cameras. Don't bring any food, snacks, or drinks. No water bottles. Don't bring any scratch paper or highlighters to the exam. And make sure your watch and calculator won't be making any noise during the exam. Now, speaking of calculators, pretty much any standard issue scientific or graphing calculator that you would use in your chemistry class is okay to use on the AP exam. Just a couple of exceptions. Calculators that have a QWERTY or typewriter style keyboard like the TI-92 are not allowed. And calculators are not allowed to communicate with each other either through the internet or infrared ports. You can use any programs that you might have stored in your calculator. You are not required to clear your calculator's memory before the exam. You can use your calculator during the entire exam. You'll also have access to the digital version of the AP Chemistry Equation Packet during the entire exam. You'll be given a paper copy of this periodic table. It has the symbols of the elements, their atomic numbers and atomic masses, but it does not have their names. The digital equation packet has two pages worth of equations, constants, and abbreviations that you can pull up on your screen at any time during the exam if you need to. And just so you know, if you have to use the restroom during the exam, you are allowed to do so as long as you go alone. Now, let's focus in on section one, which is the multiple choice part of the exam. Section one is completely digital for 2025. That means you'll see the questions on your screen and you'll click your response on the screen completely in the Blue Book app. Section one has 60 multiple choice questions with four answer choices each. Each of the questions has one best answer. You'll be given some scratch paper to work out any problems that you need to, but all your answers must be selected on screen in the Blue Book app. You'll have 90 minutes to answer the 60 questions. Most of the questions are standalone questions where there's a question and then four choices. 
However, you'll also see several item sets where there's a graph, data set, or some other type of information. Then you'll see two to four questions that address that data in different ways. Make sure to answer every multiple choice question and don't leave any blank. Your score is based solely on the number of questions you answer correctly. So if you have no idea about a question, your best bet is to take your best guess and move on. The multiple choice section is worth exactly half of your AP score. After the multiple choice section, you'll have a short break where you can use the restroom, get a drink of water, but you won't be allowed to go visit your chemistry classroom or go ask your teacher any questions about the exam. You also cannot access the internet, cell phones, or any other devices during the break. Section two is the free response section. Here, you'll see three long questions worth 10 points each, followed by four shorter questions worth four points each. The free response section is worth exactly half of your AP score, and you'll be given one hour and 45 minutes for this part. Now that seems like a lot of time, but it goes by fast, so you'll want to gauge your time with a digital watch. The three long questions may be based on one general scenario or topic, but different parts of the question will draw from various units of the course. So part A might be about equilibrium, part B might be over intermolecular forces, Part C might be over thermodynamics. These are rapid fire questions from different parts of the course. Now don't spend any more than about 20 minutes on any one of these long questions. Each of the four shorter questions usually focuses on one or two units. So they may seem more focused, but they're also worth only four points each. Don't spend more than about eight or nine minutes on any one of these shorter free responses. A few things you need to know about the free response section. The free response section for 2025 is a hybrid exam. That means you'll see the questions on the screen, but you'll write your responses on paper. Just like with the multiple choice exam, you'll have access to a paper copy of the periodic table, but the equation packet will be on screen only. Always show your work. On a problem that involves computation, if you don't show your work, you won't get credit. Always give your answer with appropriate units. Remember, in science, except for perhaps equilibrium constants or pH values, a measurement is meaningless unless it has a unit. And if the question asks you to use a specific unit, like joules or kilojoules, make sure you use that unit and not something else. Give your answer with an appropriate number of significant figures. For most problems, this will be either two or three significant figures. When calculating, avoid rounding off too much before you give your final answer. Instead, round off only at the end of a problem. Remember that on the AP exam, you are not penalized for carry-through errors. That means that if you calculate part A incorrectly, and you use your answer from part A to calculate parts B and C, you still get full credit for those later answers as long as everything else is right. So if you aren't sure about an early part of the question, that's okay, don't give up. You can still do great on the question. When writing an essay, be specific and answer the question. If the question says to explain your answer, that means you have to use complete sentences and say why you gave the answer you did. Write clearly and be careful with your use of pronouns. If you say it, make sure you're very clear what it is. And of course, write legibly. Make sure you read every part of every question and answer as many as you possibly can. Whatever you do, do not leave entire questions blank. This will kill your chances of a good score. If you've done even a little bit of preparation, you'll find several parts of an FRQ that you can answer. Each long FRQ is worth right at 12% of your entire AP exam score. So answer as many as you can and don't leave things blank. Now, if you think you might need some more preparation and review, take a look at my quick review videos for every AP Chem unit and my 103 video complete AP Chem course. And if you're serious about scoring well on the AP Chemistry exam, you'll want to get my ultimate review packet for AP Chemistry with unit summary videos, study guides for daily practice on all of the 91 topics in the course, uh, hundreds of practice multiple choice questions, full-length free response practice, 
tips and tricks, and two full practice exams with full solution walkthroughs. Go check it out over at ultimatereviewpacket.com. After you finish the exam, you'll be released from the exam room and you'll be able to take a deep breath and relax. Two days after the exam, the free response questions will be posted on the College Board website. And sometime in early July, you'll be able to access your score online. So I hope you feel more comfortable with the format of the AP Chem exam and how it works. Keep practicing and if you learned something from this video, please leave a like and a comment down below if you're so inclined. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.